Shalom. This is JCCTV. I am your presenter, Pastor Paul Ngandi from Wingi. And I'm very happy to be with you at this time uh, when we have just finished our 40. I would like us to pray before we carry on this program. Our Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Thank you for the wonderful time that we heard during the day. A very tiring time. We moved to our polling stations and uh, we cast our thoughts. We did this by faith. We prayed. We had prayed. We listened to our hearts. We did it according to your word. And Father, we want to believe that uh, we did the right thing and we are expecting the right results. We honor you and bless your holy name because you're wonderful God. We pray even for the IEBC officials as they go on with the issue of counting the faults and telling the faults that nothing is going to crop up in between and bring about any kind of discrepancy. We pray that grace will abound in these rooms everywhere in this country where the counting is going on, where the tallying is going on. Father, we pray that peace is going to prevail and we are going to have the right results because you are wonderful God and you are loving to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks once again, uh, my listener. This is uh, JCC TV and I'm happy to be your presenter this time. We have actually finished our work. Earlier on, I talked to you on how you're supposed to pray. I talked to you on how you're supposed to listen to our conscience. I talked to us on how to follow the word of God and how we should not be influenced by external forces like campaigns and uh, uh, any kind of uh, movement, people's talk and many other things and how we are supposed to follow our conscience. And I want to believe that, my dear Christian, you have done so. So I don't know whether, could you be anxious that uh, maybe you don't know what the outcome is going to be? Or probably are you in fear and worry? Remember, these are not Christian qualities. Where you fear, you worry, you are in anxiety. Faith is not there. You did this by faith. You listen to the word. You listen to your conscience. You acted. That means you you cast your thought. And now you're back at home. I want to believe you're back at home unless you are participating in uh, the counting process and the and the telling process. As we had talked earlier, you're supposed to be back in your home. Probably um, you've switched on your TV. Maybe you're watching with your computer or maybe you're listening from your radio. And I want to tell you that's the right thing to do. You don't need to be anywhere else. You need to be back at home. Now, we did three things that were very important. We prayed that God may lead us to make the right choices. And number two, we obeyed our conscience. And number three, we did this according to the word. We were in line with the word of God. Why? Because remember, I said earlier that God is obligated to answer only those prayers that are in line with his word. So because we have done those three things, now we are waiting for the outcome. And the counting is going on and the tallying is going on. And we pray that special energy and the strength, both physically, emotionally, and the mental strength is going to accompany uh, those officials that are carrying out this wonderful exercise. We want to believe because we pray that uh, we are going to have credible uh, election fair and free. And uh, we, we want to believe that we are going to have this. And um, probably I want to ask you a question. What do you expect? As a Christian, what do you expect? 
And probably as a Christian, could you have prayed somewhere and said, God, may your will be done. And if you prayed that, that's a very good prayer. Because there is your will, there is my will, and there is God's will. And we prayed that the will of God be done. It is always good when you are in an exercise like this. And probably we do not know the will of God because the will of God in this particular instance where we are looking for leaders is not written in the Bible. Where the will of God is written in the Bible, we don't need to seek God's will because it's already written. But now this, we, we don't know, our president is not written in the Bible. Our governors are not written in the Bible. So the prayer, the will of God be done is necessary in this instance. That, and I want to believe that we pray after we have, because each one of us has his own will. It's good to give room to God. When you pray, may your will be done. Then what do you expect? Because sometimes we pray, may the will of God be done. And when the will of God is done, and probably it is not in line with our will, we don't accept it. It's good to give God room. There is a possibility that we are not going, I am not going to get the president that I voted for. There is a possibility that you're not going to get the president that you voted for. But the most important thing is that you prayed. And you say, the will of God be done. What are you supposed to do in case you don't get the right governor that you wanted to get? In case you don't get the right senator that you wanted to get, what are you going to do? The worst that can be done by a Christian is to raise animosity, cause chaos, shout, begin to throw stones. That is not Christian. That's oliganism, and a Christian is not an oligan. We are, our battle is not natural. Our fights are not physical. We fight on our knees, and we prayed, and we asked the will of God to be done. It is good to give room to the will of God. After you've cast your fault, you've done your duty. You've carried out your responsibility. You prayed about it. And there are sometimes, more often than not, the will of God crosses your will. And when the will of God crosses our will, sometimes we feel like, uh uh, it's not supposed to have gone like that. It's supposed to have gone the other way. But I want to ask you, my dear listener, uh, as we wait for the counting, as we wait for the telling, it's good for us to keep peace in our lives. It's good for us to accept the leader that is going to be elected into any position. There is a possibility that the, the president that is going to come in is not your president. You did not vote for him. You did not vote for her. But you prayed that the will of God be done. So it's good to accept the will of God to be done. Therefore, what happens if the will of God comes against your will. Now the Bible tells us in, uh, in the book of Romans chapter number 13, I want to read a scripture in chapter 13 of Romans in verse number one that says, everyone must submit to the governing authorities for all authority comes from God and that those in position of authority have been placed there by God. I'm leading from the New Living Translation. The King James Version talks about, for all authority comes from God. And that's true. It is important to understand that all authority comes from God. But it is the responsibility of us to put people in the authority that God has given. Authority comes from God. That is indisputable. Authority comes from God. But the person that we are going to place in that authority comes from us. And that is why earlier on, I talked to you about the necessity for you to go and vote. Now, if you didn't vote, you voted. 
actually. The truth is, if you didn't fought, you fought it. So if you prayed and you didn't fought, then expect anything. Because we, after we pray, we are supposed to put people in authority. That authority that God has given to, uh, to, 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 the, to the leadership, we are supposed to put people, place the people there. So what happens is that when we don't vote, we place the wrong people in God's authority. When we place the wrong people in God's authority, we have got to be submissive to that authority because it is you, we have given God's authority to the wrong people. It is not God's responsibility to give the authority of God to people. It is our responsibility. The authority is ordained by God, but it is our responsibility to give people that authority that God has ordained. Therefore, the moment we you feel that my brother, my sister, that uh, uh, we did not get the right leaders, one thing I will ask you, don't throw stones. Don't shout. Don't shed blood. Kneel down and pray. We can pray for bad leaders and they can be changed by God. God can do anything. God can use. He has done that. He has used bad leaders in the past to do good things. It's amazing. In the Old Testament, God calls one of the kings, Cyrus, who wasn't even a believer, who was even a foreigner. He wasn't an Israelite. He calls him my servant. Because... God has the ability to turn that which is evil for the goodness of his people. And therefore it is good for us to accept what we do because we are the full time, the full responsibility and the full mandate to choose leaders. In any case, we chose the wrong ones, then we are not supposed to riot. We are not supposed to pull out the railway. We are not supposed to throw stones. We are not supposed to shed blood. We are not supposed to kill our brothers and our sisters. We are supposed to go back to our knees and pray and probably repent. Especially if a Christian, as a Christian, you did in default, you are supposed to repent. You contributed into giving us the bad leaders. Therefore, go and repent and ask God to help you so that in 2027, You'll participate in election. But before we, re we reach 2027, pray for the leaders that are there. Pray that they may do good, even if goodness is not in them. Cause them to do so. You have the power of God to transform things, to change the situation and circumstances, to change the thoughts and minds of leaders. Influence them by your prayer. Kneel down, pray first. Call on the name of Jehovah God and change the motives Change the decisions, the, the wrong decision that could be there in parliament. Change them by the power of your prayer. We can rule on our knees. And it is important. When we know this as Christians, we will not fight. When we know this as Christians, we will kneel down and pray for this nation. And I want to thank God because our exercise is over. And now we are waiting for the results. And we thank God for the results. Faith thanks God before the results come. This is what the Bible teaches in uh, Mark chapter 11 and verse uh, 24. Probably, uh, I think it's necessary. We, we can still go there. We can go to Mark 11 and I show you how faith works. Mark 11, 24. Uh, Mark chapter 11, uh, verse 24. I want to read from the New Living Translation. It says, I tell you. You can pray for anything, and if you believe that you have received, it will be yours. Listen to that. I tell you, you can pray for anything, and if you believe that you have received, it will be yours. Now, whatsoever things that, now King James Version says, whatsoever things that you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and they shall be yours. Now, receiving comes before they become yours. So we begin to thank God. When you receive, you begin to thank, thank God before the results are out. Thank God for that president that you elected. Thank God for that governor that you elected. Thank God for everybody that is going to come into rulership because 
you are a man of faith, you are a man of faith, you are a woman of faith, and that is what you're supposed to do. Receive by faith and begin to thank God. And that is what we are supposed to do as believers. When the results come, don't go about complaining, don't go about maybe uh, shutting down other people and uh, doing all those kind of things because you are a believer. You prayed for the will of God. And we thank God because I know God has good plans for this country and for this nation. We thank God for everything. And I would like us to pray as we end this session and as we continue to wait for our tallying and as we continue to wait for the results, uh, I would like us to pray. Our Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We have done our responsibility. You have cast the faults. We prayed about it. We listened to our hearts. We obeyed your word and we cast the fault. And Father, we thank you for the telling. We thank you for the, for, for the results that we are going to get because we know that we have the right leaders in place. Help each one of them to govern this country to success, to govern this country to good direction. We thank you and honor you because you're a wonderful God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Shalom. God bless you. Thank you for listening to me.